At one time, the hermit explained, the peoples of Times Hall possessed lifespans that exceeded your kind by hundreds. You keep such strange thoughts, hermit, Randall playfully retorted. Randall's earlier night fit revealed his vulnerability and required that he explain how his addiction staved off his defeating dreams. His self-disclosure exposed his weakest side to a total stranger against his wishes to guard himself. Perhaps the dreariness of these mountains has entered your brain and dulled your senses, Randall kidded. The hermit was unmoved by Randall's lecture. Every child believes such bedtime stories until it's time to grow up, Randall cracked. Turan was again unimpressed. He turned to the youth and with animation spoke directly. When the eldest of the peoples of Times Hall, Sanji Sabero, built the Capra, a sphere of serious intent and design, the machine without rival, the pre-lives gathered with the people to assist with its remarkable purpose. The hermit's harmless prattle had the flair of high drama, though his confidence in its fables was off-putting. The pre-lives still evade my understanding, the old man murmured and abruptly quit, lost in his thoughts. However, Randall's curiosity was hooked. Go on, invited Randall, willing to humor the host. The hermit, however, sat stone-like, unyielding. What about the cap... the cap... what is it? Randall pried. Rounding out of his trance, the hermit slowly spoke, trilling the R. The capra. It was to be the great prison of all time. Turan touched Randall's tunic with his forefinger to punctuate his thought. Think, man, he demanded. If the greatest of all prisons could hold anything or anyone, what would you place within it? The hermit raised his voice. Randall had never confronted such a question. A perfect prison confounded him. What indeed, the hermit replied as Randall offered no response. Randall, though, had his answer. The ancient warmonger Arakan Harpen. He was never captured after his destruction of Glendary. If he were alive, then him. Harpen's name bore disparate displeasure in Glendary, where the commander's war crimes were particularly repulsive. From his enslavement campaigns to his widespread purient acts, from his heinous cannibalism to depraved mutilations. As I thought, the old man worked, you're like the rest. Tran pushed his finger harder into Randall's chest and then relaxed. This slight affront reinforced Randall's contempt for the hermit. A child like a racking harpen, the hermit derided, would last half a day at most at something as consuming as the capra. Speak real thoughts, imp. Turan's scorn and condescension again fell upon Randall, and thunder erupted across his face. He would no longer countenance insults from the manic hermit. Randall growled and recited the opening of the play, The Ancient Self, spoken by a character who prepared to murder another. I can see, I can speak, without eyes, without tongue, I can know, I am real. Gathering his goods, Randall stood, buttoned up his overcoat, snatched his knapsack, and marched for the opening. The hermit's apology quickly appeared. My dear friend, please forgive this old, weary man. I've not had a proper visitor since a time I cannot remember. Your inventions are too much. An alleged war, an incredible age, the prevarication of your so-called home, the children's yarns, the duplicity, Randall countered. No courtly treatment can dissuade me from retaking my journey. The time with you has been a waste. Wait here, boy, Herpidros shouted, for Randall got under his skin, and he wanted to make a point. You do not know of the great Capra. You do not know what you have, youth. The hermit's hot temper mounted with his growing zeal. His caution waned, and he lost all courtesy. You have not seen the heights of the war as I have, his voice increased. You are too quick to judge, cocky, simple human. At that, Randall pounced. With one hand holding the hidden dagger he carried, the other hand grabbed the hermit's crusty throat. For a second time since meeting the traveler, the hermit was unprepared for Randall's sudden move, and again he could not shake Randall's grip. See here, hermit. Thou hast thy place, I have mine. Randall quoted the following most notorious line from the play in which the two embattled figures address their enmity and ruthlessly discharge the life of each other. The hermit had apparently read the same play, for the meaning bore home. I have no event but to die, is it? 
Herr Pedros said. But I have yet to tell you of the Capra, he now begged. Vandal, though, cut him off. Damn to the center of the bone with your inventions. No, whispered the old man, two eyes brimming with crocodile tears. No, not invention. Please let me show you the familiar, and you will see that you are to be pitied more than I, and why I mistook you for someone else. He added more to draw out Randall's weakness. And how you can survive against the bone. Look at me. Trant's presence evidenced the truth Randall could not explain. The hermit had endured the eternal starkness of the Tisrian terrain. Was his existence itself proof one could survive the bone? His possible secrets enticed Randall. While the hermit incessantly lied, Randall noted his fabrications were half-truths, that is, a fraction of truth escaped each deceit. The recluse wasn't completely psychotic, though his speech intimated an alien separateness. Nonetheless, perhaps Randall could sift through the verbal garbage and find his prize. Randall swore at himself for his own curiosity. But, he reasoned, the old hermit might be the only one who would know how to endure the matchless desert. Settling into his uncomfortable decision, Randall released his grip, turned to his seat, and pulled off his knapsack. Please, Randall began, taking a tone of both patience and authority, define the copra. Content with Randall's response, the hermit began, Yes, the great prison. I apologize, I am very much out of practice with people. Your answer would have been better if you had said evil. The ultimate prison would house the ultimate wrongdoer, evil. Truly, Randall debated, while I concede that your choice is philosophically valid, how can there be any practical means to accomplish the harnessing of evil? That I will say later. Let me finish the story of the Capra, he added, again trilling the R. Three early races, the pre-lives, the Bata, and the people of Times Hall, whom he called the Colossi, assisted in the construction of the Capra. In grand ambition, led by the machine's chief designer, Sanji Shibero, the three trapped distorted time, or as the hermit called it, the thin places. Their collective knowledge was a trove of diverse and cryptic experiences on which Sanji based his plan. In a way, Turan concluded, to make the prison, the elder Sanji extracted light from the shadows. He pulled heat from the cold. Randall's paucity of imagination agitated Turan, as Randall could not comprehend restraining the intangible. The hermit went farther back into history, to start with the Banes and end with the failed Colossi attempt to cleanse the world. The beginnings, the hermit began, flung the Banes across time to obscure locations, hidden in a stone, a clot of dirt, or a pool of water, immobile yet influential, dominating yet passive. The Banes, Sanji warned the nations, could possess its dupe through a whisper, perhaps a murmur. Their influence or enslavement would bring uncountable engulfing decay. Nothing impeded their mounting corruption. The masses, fearful that malevolent Banes would pervert the land and the sea, followed Sanji's wisdom to rid themselves of this despair. Did they all follow Sanji? Randall asked doubtfully. A handful of classy rejected the majority, Turan interjected, and though these were my ancestors, I know little. Decades of construction ensued as the pre-lives ferreted out the banes to relocate them. The Colossi located the place where they could weave and meld distorted time and erect their spherical prison. On the selected day, the Bata and Colossi peoples arrived in the verdant bome, where the elder Sanji alone secured the banes inside the Capra. As the last bane entered, vermilion streaks flamed through the sphere like a far-off sun. Were the pre-lives there? Andal asked about Turan's puzzle. Gone. The Pata, too, retreated, for they grew sick from the concentration of Banes, as you or I might from an intolerable stench. The people watched Sanji close the inner and outermost doors of the Capra, permanently sealing the wretched influences. The seal was perfect. As the Banes fought back, the Imperial Globe defied their force with equal counterforce. The foul of the world was ended. The anxious races marveled at the consuming sight as the Capra levitated. The confinement surpassed the Bane's twisted attempts to sabotage Jail and Jailer. However, so focused were the crowds they did not hear the piercing shout of the Bata. The odor had changed from the stench of gangrene rancidness to the sickly sweet pong of fresh blood. 
as a small ailing bird flickers briefly, fumbles, then falls into a forgotten field. So did life die within the capra. But whose? The Pata collectively searched themselves as if one of their own had fallen. Through their single mind, they isolated the cause. The entire race shouted alarm. The capra was dead. The veins had corrupted the sphere. The prison itself was impenetrable within and without, but not the mind of the machine. In no time apparent to the spectators, the bane discerned the surpassing supremacy of their keeper and its fetters and turned inward to assail the soul of the capra. Corrupting their captor by mid-ascent, the darkness swallowed the capra. Through a lie, an invention of hopelessness, existence has no purpose. The giant orb's resolve could not resist. With its meaning disavowed, the great capra opened its doors to despair, for life without meaning provides only one exit, suicide. Controlling the thing which held them, amassed in numbers and might, the Banes possessed their prison and the orb fell thunderously from the skies. Onlookers who were not crushed by the exploding forces died in the toxic poison that rapidly oozed across the plains, as if death itself exhaled 10,000 corpses. Confused, Sanji, the progenitor of the tragedy, watched the sphere turn black, as if the sky had in it an enormous empty hole. The spectacle broke Sanji in two, and he could not endure. Duran interrupted his own embellishments and looked directly at Randall, who twiddled his right foot. Focused on the mundane movement of his own appendage, Randall did not realize the hermit had stopped speaking. When the unexpected quiet reached his half-conscious mind, Randall caught Turan's angry stare. The hermit barked a curse. You will see that place of isolation and destruction, my journeying friend. Randall stirred. Was the statement a threat or a promise, he pondered. But Herpetros continued. As the Banes controlled the prodigious mind of the Capra, the machine's infection poisoned the green fields where tens of thousands lay dead. Upon the vast plains, the sphere roared, and as a sheer white light burst through an internal seal, the orb disappeared into nothingness. I believe, continued the hermit, that Elder Sansji or the other Kalasi had planned that should an unanticipated event jeopardize the orb's mission, it would head off in one never-bending direction. The hermit paused. He looked older than before. But that is a lie, the hermit spoke as he ended his narrative. The evil returns. What do you mean, said Randall. Come, let me know you, and let yourself be known to you. Turan quoted a different line from the play Randall had recited. In his non-stop, dramatic fashion, Herpetros walked to the back of the cave and pointed his bent finger where the ceiling rounded to the floor. Randall saw nothing. Annoyed at Randall's lack of comprehension, Turan shrugged and walked through the wall. Immediately, Randall chased him to decode his illusion and found the coarse netting which camouflaged the exit. Randall caught up and followed Turan's lead through the cavern. Hold on there, the youth demanded. You'll never find what you're looking for sitting in that cave, boy, Turan replied. Come with me, just a few strides, and you'll learn about the bomb. To believe or disbelieve, the old storyteller confounded Randall. His sole interest resided in the hermit's own survival. Other matters were beyond digestion. When Randall refused to go further, Turan turned on him. Look here, you can't survive in the bomb and you can't trust the two knights. How do you know I'm heading for the two knights? Randall puzzled at Turan's guess. What? he said incredulously. A simple boy in the bomb with no guide, no real equipment to mine bloodstone? and an urgent need to be on time, you put the pieces together. Turan again motioned for Randall to follow. Randall realized his initial impression of the hermit may have been wrong, as one wrongly supposes the mass of an object by its shape. This time, he reluctantly complied. The two worked their way through the crooks and turns of karst as the hermit lit staged torches. Turan continued with his speeches of the capra, but Randall was not impressed. Randall's compelling resolve to endure the torturous, odd rhetoric lay solely in Tran's possible clues to safely navigate the bone. On balance, Randall's pack animals were safe with ample water and the way back was lit. Why not humor the hermit? Became a game until he grew tired. 
However, as the old man piloted him deeper into the heart of the mountain, Randall's determination waned. 